All right, this is bowling quiz number four. This is the first quiz that you are not allowed to use a calculator on. This would be calculator inactive part of the EOG. And so it's going to test your skills with decimals um, and some other computation. Let's go ahead and get started. So number one, Joe will go to the swimming pool on 20 different days this month. A one day pass to the pool is $225. A monthly pass is $30. How much money will Joe save by buying a monthly pass? So it's not asking you to figure out which the better deal is. It's telling you that the better deal is the monthly pass. It just wants to know how much money you're going to save. So first you need to calculate how much it would be for Joe to buy a one day pass on 20 different days. To do that you're going to do 2.25 times 20 days. Now remember when you're multiplying decimals do not worry about the decimal point until the very end. 0 times 5 is 0, 0 times 2 is 0, 0 times 2 is 0. Over here you're going to put an X or another 0 as a placeholder because we're moving down to the next number. 2 times 5 is 10, 0 carry the 1. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5 and 2 times 2 is 4. Now that we have these, we're going to add them up. We have 0, 0, 5, and 4. Now we're going to go back to our original problem right here. How many numbers do we have after the decimal point? Well, there's no decimal here, and there's one, two numbers here. So we're going to start from the back and go 1, 2. So, if he buys a daily pass, it's going to cost him $45. If he buys a monthly pass, it's going to cost him $30. And it wants to know how much money he's going to save, so we're going to subtract. We have 0, 0, bring down the decimal point, 5 minus 0 is 0, 4 minus 3 is 1. And so he's going to save C, $15. All right, next question. The price of theater ticket of a theater ticket increased from 750 to 775. The theater sold 315 tickets at the higher price. With the price increase, how much more money did they earn on tickets? Again, this is a two-part problem. First, you need to figure out what the increase was. And if you're good with money, you'll know right off the bat what it is. But you can also do subtraction. And then you'll have to multiply that times 315 tickets. So let's first figure out what the price increase was. So $7.75 minus $7.50. Five minus, make sure you line up your decimals, by the way. 5 minus 0 is 5, 7 minus 5 is 2, bring down your decimal, 7 minus 7 is 0. So they increased the ticket price by 25 cents, but now let's apply that to 315 tickets and see how much money they ended up making. So here we go. 5 times 5 is 25, carry the 2, put the 5 down here. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 is 7. 5 times 3 is 15. We're done with the 5, so we're going to put an X here as a placeholder. 2 times 5 is 10, put a 0, carry the 1. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. Now some of you might say, oh, well, the next number is a 0. We don't have to do that. Zeros are not important. They are important because when you're moving that decimal point, you may move it all the way back to those zeros. So when you go for your third line, you put two placeholders. Zero times five is zero. Zero times one is zero. Zero times three is zero. And let's add them all up. So we have five. We have seven. We have five plus three is eight. And we have six plus one is seven. And we have zero. Now we need to figure out your decimal point. Go back to the original problem. How many numbers are after the decimal? No decimal point in 315. Two spots on the decimal there. So we're going to start from the back and go 1 and 2. So they made an extra $78.75. All right, let's take a look at the next question. You'll notice that this is a gridded response. 
How much money should John get back when he uses $10 to pay for purchases totaling $5.25? Express the answer as dollars cents. So it's a simple subtraction problem. But what they're trying to see if you can do is subtract two decimals where you have to do a lot of borrowing because we have a lot of zeros here. So $10 minus $5.25. Minus now you're going to notice I was very particular about lining up the decimal and lining up each of the numbers. Now let's go ahead and solve. 0 minus 5, can't do it. Can't borrow from here, cannot borrow from here we're going to have to borrow from here. That becomes a zero. This would become a 10, but we need to borrow from here. So it becomes a nine. And this becomes a 10, but we need to borrow from here. So that becomes a nine and this becomes a 10. That's what they're trying to see if you can do by hand. 10 minus five is five. Nine minus two is seven. Bring down your decimal. Nine minus five is four and zero minus zero is zero. Now, this is a dollars and cents problem, but if you remember the rules for gridded response, you cannot write the dollar sign on there. You're just going to write 4.75, and you need to make sure that you bubble in. Don't forget to bubble in your decimal point. And there we go. And that's it. All right, next question. What is the product of 2.52 and 3.4? In order to solve this problem, you need to know what the word product means. And I hope that you know that it means multiplication. So let's go ahead and set this up. 2.52 times 3.4. Remember with uh, decimal problems and multiplication, you don't have to worry about the decimal until the end. Four times two is eight. Four times five is 20, so I'm gonna put the zero, carry the two. Four times two is eight plus two is 10. I'm done with my four, so I put a placeholder. Three times two is six. Three times five is 15, so I put the five down here. I carry the one. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. And now I'm going to add these guys up. 8 plus 0 is 8. 0 plus 6 is 0. 0 plus 5 is 5. 1 plus 7 is 8. Now I worry about my decimal. Go back to the original problem. How many numbers are after the decimal? 1, 2, 3. Start from the back and go 1, 2, and 3. So let's bubble our response, 8.568. And let's bubble in, 8.568. Excellent job. All right, last one for this quiz. At a store, Susan selected a pumpkin that weighed 35.2 ounces. The pumpkin costs $1.80 per pound. There are 16 ounces in one pound. How much did, Stuart, did Susan's pumpkin cost? Express the answer in dollars and cents. This is a multi-step problem, okay? You can do this a couple different ways. I'm going to do it one way, but if it works out for you another way, that is perfectly fine. The first thing that I'm going to do is change this ounces to pounds, okay? So I have converting units. I have 16 ounces over one pound equals 35.2 ounces over X pounds, okay? Now remember, no calculator. I'm going to circle my variable. 35.2 times 1 is 35.2 divided by 16. And I need to do that by hand. So I'm going to set up my division problem. 35.2. Now how many times does 16 go into 3? 0. How many times does 16 go into 35? 2 and it's going to give me um, 
32. All right, 35 minus 32 is 3. Oh, I forgot to bring my decimal to the roof, sorry. And bring down the 2. How many times does 16 go into 32? 2. And it goes in perfectly evenly. Okay? Now, I've done step one of my problem. I know that that pumpkin weighs 2.2 pounds and that it's $1.80 per pound. Now, all I need to do is multiply. Okay? 1.80 times 2.2. Remember, with multiplication, don't worry about lining up your decimals. You take care of that at the end. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 8 is 16, so we carry the 1, write the 6. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. Now we're going to move on to the next 2, so we're going to put a placeholder. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 8 is 16, so we have the 1, put the 6. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. And we're going to go ahead and add this up. We have 0, 6, let me make the page bigger, 9, and 3. How many numbers are after the decimal? Go back to the problem. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Now, this problem is talking about dollars and cents, and it tells you right here, answer in dollars and cents. Now, this 0 is not part of dollars and cents because you can only have two numbers after the decimal point. So your answer is 3.96. Always, always be careful about that. And now we need to go ahead and just put it in the gridded response. 3.96. So we have 3.96. All right, good job. That was the end of quiz number four. You survived the first calculator inactive. Good luck on quiz five.